Wonder Girl issue number four, The Adventures of Yara Fleur, continue in this ongoing series. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the next couple of issues have been delayed a bit because of paper shortages and just an overall thing happening in the world. Things were pushed back, which I understand. It happens, so the fact that we can end this part of the book until we get issue five maybe i'm wrong maybe the delay was fixed or everything but the fact that we can wrap this up and just do something pretty impressive it's kind of cool to see this far into a book you know four issues in things have taken a turn now this could be for the you know better of the book or it could be to the detriment of it that it's suddenly becoming too steeped in an already existing pantheon We'll see. I have some hesitations with certain arcs in here, but I do trust Gerald Jones to tell a great story. And again, the artwork is gorgeous. The coloring is gorgeous. It goes without saying that I have to bring that up just because you look at it. It is just spectacularly beautiful and just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous and prestigious. And it's my favorite art on shelves right now. When I do my year end wrap up where I talk about the best art and colors, it's got to be this book all the way around. Honestly, it's just gorgeous to look at. So, something that we've seen in the ongoing Wonder Woman book is this narration by this mysterious figure. We know it's Rad Tusk in that one. Basically, that like narration about the events of this character is kind of like passing over from Diana over to Yara in here. Somebody is talking about her trials with the Olympians. And maybe like the narration thing leads into like the overall story theme or like the, you know age-old tale and the fable in a sense of like the olympic gods and that pantheon and stuff so yara is pretty much just learning by this centaur named shiron and basically it's like you can calm yourself down and then maybe you'll be able to you know complete the task like you know free your mind to clear your head and your spirit will guide you in this way and the task that yara is presented with is capturing and taming this pegasus now, if you have read the Future State books, which I have, she does tame the Pegasus. And, of course, she tames it later on in this book, too. We know this Pegasus is named Jerry. So, we start off and she can't really tame the beast. It's not really working. And we see that her trainer is just kind of getting mad at her. Sharon's just like, you, you just can't clear your head enough to actually focus on things you are so stubborn and arrogant that you can't really calm down and Hera who is now taking a bigger presence in the actual story here she's kind of getting impatient with this like there's something she needs to be accomplished by you and you are not accomplishing it so again we have another scene where she tries to tame the Pegasus it bites her and basically again it's just sure on like you, you just you're just going too hard at this you're just angry and you're stubborn. You can't focus until your head is clear. Your heart is cool. You got to relax. And then later we cut to a rainy day in Olympus for some reason. The Pegasus just trots over to her and she pats it. And that's how they have their connection. And thus the age old tale of how Yara got her Pegasus Jerry is solved. So the next day of training, Sharon's waiting for her, doesn't see her, and she flies down on the Pegasus, and it's like, she's kind of clear her head in a sense. Like, we, we don't establish that Yara, like, became, you know, focused and clear-minded. It's just more like the horse took her, <laughs> which I like that a little bit more than actually showing Yara learning the lesson. Just because as this book goes on, and towards the end of this issue too, it's just like, everyone has eyes on this girl. Everyone is watching her, telling her what to be to the point where it's like if she can make her own choice, it'd be unbelievable and something unprecedented to see for her. So the fact that we don't actually see her like becoming that thing that you need to do to become like the chosen goddess here and like just taming the horse makes it look like she did. I think that's kind of cool. So later on, we cut to the gardens of Hera and Mount Olympus. We see she is walking with Eros and basically Eros is like, you could do it. You, you can become her champion. Hera's like, you've passed all the tests. You have become very good at this. So you can just become the, the person in charge here. And, and you know, become the, I guess, take up the Wonder Woman role in a sense. But I don't really know. Now, I, I th we're doing the Trial of the Amazons event very soon. We know Nubia's got her thing going on. Hippolyta's got a thing going on. Faruka's playing a bigger role. That's where Artemis is a part of. Now I'm wondering what Hera's role is going to be in this and maybe she is going to manipulate Yara into being something and Yara will have to learn to be free from that. We'll have to wait and see. 
But basically, Eros is like, yeah, you can do it. You, you can do it. You can calm down and do all this stuff. But Yara's like, I just got to say a couple goodbyes back on, you know, the mortal realm. So she talks to this cute guy she met in Brazil. I've messed up his name three different times so far. I'm not going to try it again. I just feel like I'm going to screw it up. So, you know, handsome boy, she says her goodbyes to him. And she's like, should I do this for the right reasons? Why am I actually joining Hera or why should I accept that role? And again, I don't know why, but Yara is just, a, just beautifully drawn in every single panel of this book. Just perfect. I love it. It's just like, give me this in live action right now. This is a character I want to see forever and ever. So suddenly she hears something in the distance. She goes to check out this nether... You're going to say an Amazon-type character showed up to like spill some beans to her. Her name is Potera, and I do believe, now I might be mistaken on this, I don't think I am though, this is the soul she wanted to save in the Future State book? I could be wrong, I know this, it's all new characters in this side of the lore, I can't remember if we've seen her or not, but basically this spirited Amazon shows Yara the history of how she got to be and how she existed, which I'm like, yeah, what is that history, let's see. So basically, you know, we learn the history of Themyscira, and there was this one woman on Themyscira named Ayla, and she was like, I'm not gonna stay. I'm gonna go explore. So she goes to explore. She sees the, the world that man built. She had many adventures. Eventually, she finds a suitor. She's fallen in love with that suitor. They have a daughter, and now they're just like trying to have an adventure again, but they run into this tribe in the rainforest of Brazil, and these tribal people decide, hey, we like you, Ayla, and we, we like your daughter. Why don't you come here and be a part of our Amazonian tribe? So they do, and then that's when we get the attack that we saw in the Future State book, where is it Ares? I cannot remember for the life of me if it's Ares. But s some people attack this tribe, kill most of them, and basically, that's how we lose Yara's mom. And Yara sees all that, but as she is having the vision of all that stuff, she runs into Artemis and Cassie, who just show up in time right when things are getting serious and crazy. Artemis is like, all right, you're coming with me. I'm done with all this crap. Let's get this done. Cassie's like, can we just take a minute here? Like, everybody has their sights set on this girl. Maybe we should figure out why that is. Or, like, take a minute. You know, what What does Hera want with you? So out of respect for Cassie, Artemis steps back a little bit. But Cassie leaves with, like, you know, there's going to be a lot of people after you right now. You should, uh, you know, get it together. I know you're eager to, you know, like run into the, the, the world and adventure and find your belonging and all that, but there is a lot of stuff going on in our world and in our specter right now. So take a minute, catch your breath, and then when we come back, maybe decide for sure what it is you want to be a part of. And this kind of gives Yara some setback, but she's like, I, I got to figure out what I want to do. So because of that, we cut to Mount Olympus and we see that Yara is going to accept the title of the champion of Hera, which is kind of just like an echelon above the rest of them. Because, you know, if Hera is the actual, like, queen of the Amazons, like the first Amazon in a sense, Hippolyta and Wonder Woman and Artemis and Faruka and Nubia, they'd all be an echelon below what Yara is right now. She is like the champion of the queen, which is kind of exciting. And these last couple pages are gorgeous. Again, there's just something about the way that Hera is drawn that just invokes... A little bit of Nicole Kidman. I, I just like that this Eros just looks like a complete asshole half the time. And again, we're setting up this establishment of the Peacocks. Which I know it's weird to say, but that Wonder Woman Historia books is just like steeped in like the, the costuming of those colors and those feathers. So the fact that we're getting it here now, Joel Jones' style is perfect and beautiful and just makes this book all the more gorgeous. And that's where it ends. We see that Yara accepts the title of being Hera's champion, which I think is going to tie in directly to the Trial of the Amazon storyline. Of course, we will have to wait and see, but this is really fun. Very fun stuff to do with these characters, just establishing Yara's backstory and her future on one issue and having it flow perfectly. It's pretty impressive. You know, there's Jerry, who I'm, I'm going to assume is going to be a main character for her now, her horse to ride on. McFarlane make that a special deluxe action figure. You know, Yara and Jerry, that'd be really fun. I just like this book, and I, I just think it's so special, so unique, and it's just one of the most gorgeous books to look at. I just think it's perfect in every regard of the word, and this issue is no exception to that rule. 
So, Wonder Girl issue number four. I am going to give a nine out of ten. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, and I will catch you in the next one. Have fun, stay safe, good luck.